Living on the moon sounds cool, until you realize nights there last 14 days. That's two weeks of total darkness. No sunlight, no solar power, just freezing cold. That's not just bad for your sleep schedule, but also a nightmare for building moon bases. But there are a few lucky spots on the moon where the sun barely ever sets. They're just up there basking in solar glory, living their best lives. Scientists call them the peaks of eternal light. And yes, they sound like something out of a sci-fi novel, but they're real and they could totally change the game for lunar exploration. Hi, I'm Anna Girish and this is Space for Humans. Here's the deal. Most of the moon goes from scorching hot to freezing cold every 14 Earth days. It's like living inside a broken oven. But a few high up spots near the moon's poles, especially around Shackleton Crater, get sunlight almost all the time. Not 24 seven, but pretty close. NASA and ESA have found six of these ridges that stay lit more than 90% of the time. And why does that matter? Because sunlight equals power. And on the moon, you want all the solar energy you can get. Those peaks could host solar stations, sub rovers and even power habitats for astronauts. But here's the catch. These always lit spots are tiny, a few hundred meters across, so the race to grab them is already heating up. Welcome to Moon Monopoly, I guess. So sunlight, power, water, and fuel. The moon's poles have everything a future lunar colony might need. But here's another catch. Nobody can actually own any of it. According to the Outer Space Treaty of 1967, yeah, there's space law, no country can claim any part of the moon, even if they're the first to set up camp on a sunlit ridge. And that brings up all kinds of wild questions. Who gets to use the peaks of eternal light? How do we share limited spots in a place where solar power is survival? And what happens when nations, companies, or even billionaires want a piece of the moon? As someone working on space power, systems, PELs are basically beachfront property on the moon. Except if your beach had endless solar energy and the occasional rover zooming by. And honestly, I can't wait to be a part of that reality. Thanks for watching! If you want to keep exploring the weird, the wonderful, and the very human side of space, hit that subscribe button. Catch your next orbit!